World War II was one, if not the most violent and destructive war in human history. With a death toll of over 50 million people, 3% of the world's population were killed in just the span of five years. November 1941, Japanese imperial troops aggressively move west, imposing the Japanese empire and ideologies on the people of Manchuria. Meanwhile, Nazi Germany rapidly expands in Europe and locks heads with Russian troops pushing towards the west. Just a month later, Guam would be plunged into one of the most tragic times in her history. The date is December 8, 1941. Chamorro families gather in the capital city of Agatya to celebrate the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. Faintly heard behind the prayers being recited in Mass, the sound of roaring planes can be heard making its way towards the island. The sound of bombings and gunfire strike terror in families still in church. A day meant for celebration and joy suddenly turns into a scene of terror and hysteria. Families frantically search through rushing crowds of people, gathering missing family members in the hopes of escaping an impromptu war zone. Two days later, on December 10th, the Japanese forces launched their full invasion on the island. The possibility of a resurgence is tragically low due to the fact that Guam's militia was extremely undermanned. The militia consisted of 274 Navy personnel, who more than half were non-combative personnel, 150 Marines, and about 120 Insular Force Guards, whose military training was minimal at best. A majority of the weapons in their arsenal were vintage and haven't been used since World War I. The Japanese invasion forces landed in three points on the island. Tamunings, Dunka Beach, Tumon, and Njotnya at Tokyo Bay. After landing, Japanese forces regrouped and made their way to Ogatnya, where they would be faced against our militia. Although the resistance was spirited, to no avail, the militia sur was surrounded after an hour of battle with numerous casualties on both sides. Freedom for the Chamorro people would not come in a long time. The Chamorro people exemplified courage and perseverance during times where hope would run thin. We stayed strong, and we carried on. However, we must always remember the fallen heroes and our brothers and sisters who were unjustly tortured and executed in cold blood. One specific son of Guam demonstrated absolute courage and strong will, even in the face of death. That, of course, is Father Jesus Baza Duenas. Father Jesus Baza Duenas was born on March 19, 1911, the son of Luis Polino Duenas and Josefa Martinez Baza. As he grew, he was a determined and confident person. After high school, he departed to the Philippines where he was to study theology. He attended the San Jose Seminary in Manila to learn about the priesthood. After his studies in the Philippines were finished, he was to be ordained and to start his mission to spread the good news. It happened on June 11, 1938, when Miguel Angel Alano, a bishop at the time, who ordained the new priest. He was strong in the faith and was willing to do whatever it took to spread the word of God. Father Duenas was known as the second Chamorro priest to be ordained. As a newly ordained priest, he was an assistant and director of a group of people who want to go to Manila, like he did, to study on how to become a priest. Father Duenas was then assigned to St. Joseph's Church in Inarahan where he would spread the good news of the Lord. During the Japanese occupation, there were only two ordained Chamorro Catholic priests on the island, and one of which was Father Duenas. When the Japanese exiled all the American missionaries on Guam in January of 1942, Duenas and the newly ordained Father Oscar Calvo were left behind as the only two Catholic priests allowed on island due to the fact they, that they were both Chamorros. Father Duenas and Father Calvo agreed to share responsibilities for the island, with Duenas taking care of the South, headquartered in Inarahan. By the end of that year, Bishop Alano had written a letter carried by Monsignor Dominic Fukuhori, a Japanese priest, to Father Duenas temporarily appointing him the head of the Catholic Church of Guam in the bishop's absence. 
The letter had instructed Father Duenas that he was to defend Chamorros in their encounters with the Japanese government. Father Duenas knew that this could cost him his life. During the occupation, it was known that Father Duenas was a thorn in the side of the Japanese. Father Duenas did what he could to stand up against what injustice whenever he saw it. At meetings with the Japanese officials, Father Duenas would bring up cases of Japanese improperties and abuse of Chamorros. He was also accused of spreading rumors about Japanese defeat in Saipan. However, despite his attitude towards the Japanese, it was his rumored knowledge about the location of George Tweed, an American serviceman who had escaped capture during the invasion, that got him, him in trouble. On July 8, 1944, Father Duenas was arrested in Ninarahan. Father Duenas remained silent and remained strong in the faith and de even declined the chance to break out, saying that he had done no wrong and God would look after him. In the early morning of July 12, 1944, Father Duenas and his nephew Edward Duenas were taken to Tai to a field station of the Japanese agricultural unit Kai Kontai. On that silent morning of that day, Father Duenas, Edward Duenas, and two other Chamorro men were brutally beheaded. The body of Father Duenas was exhumed after the war and then buried anew in the sanctuary of the parish church in Inarahan. In 1948, Guam Bishop Apollaris Bumgartner began a Catholic minor seminary and high school in Ta'i near the site of the priest's brutal murder and named the institution Father Duenas Memorial School, where it remains today. That has influenced me in a way that I feel like I should meet up to his standards. He was a really great example to me and it was, a, it was really encouraging for me and I want to be like him in a way that he was when he wasn't afraid and fearless. It influenced me because I have a role model who teaches me how to act as an individual. He's taught me what I should know, what is right and wrong, and what more my morality should be, and always do what's right because that's what makes us strong in the faith. Father Grace's legacy has influenced me in the fact that he as a priest gave everything to his church community and I as a teacher try to give everything to my community at the school to make my lectures as good as possible. The school experience has helped me for I feel like I could be, it, it prepared me for, I feel like I'm already prepared for college even though I'm a sophomore, but I know once I'm a senior I'll be fully prepared for taught me the meaning of friendship, how everyone has each other's back, and how we're all brothers. It's helped me in that it's educated me to become more strong-willed and become more grounded in my beliefs, and that I should always fight for what I think is right and what I should always do. Um, his sacrifice makes us strive to do what is right because um, he's like an example to us all of what at how we should be in this school because we wear his uniform and we represent it. It helped me to do what is right because how he helped the Chamorros um, shows me how I should act and how I should help others who need me. He gave us the example of that no matter what, do what is right because the one thing that matters the most is our morality and our soul.